Hello, this is a CSET Biology, Section B, Life Processes and Diseases, VO2 for eBiome. Okay, so there is a need for transport systems in multicellular organisms. Large multicellular organisms, such as humans, have a large volume in relation to their surface area. Substances would therefore take a long time to diffuse into the body and to get air to cells deep in the body. The rate of this movement would be much slower than what is required by cells of the body. Therefore, the transport system is necessary to get important substances to all cells. This transport system is also needed to take away harmful toxic substances and wastes from the cells. Materials needed to be transported in animals and plants vary, and here we have a table. On the left, we have substances to be transported in animals, and on the right, we have substances to be transported in plants. Okay, so we have dissolved food, for instance. Dissolved food must be transported from the ileum, where it is absorbed and transported to cells of the body. Nitrogenous waste must be transported from cells where they were produced and transported to kidneys for excretion. Oxygen must be transported from the lungs where it diffuses into the blood and must be transported to body cells for respiration. Now let's look at the plants. A substance to be transported is carbon dioxide. It must be transported from air surrounding leaves and they must be, it must be transported to all photosynthesizing cells. Water must be transported from the soil and tra transported to all cells. Okay. So now to describe the structure and function of the circulatory system in humans. Substances travel to and from blood cells via the blood. These substances dissolve in the blood, which is mainly water, so that they can diffuse into the cells. Blood is transported around the body by blood vessels, and the blood is pumped by the heart. This system, made up of the blood, the blood vessels, and the heart, is called the circulatory system. The heart is made up of the atrium, the ventricle, and the cardiac muscle and you can see beside each what they do the blood vessels are capillaries veins venules arteries and arterioles the blood is made up of red blood cells or erythrocytes and they deal with oxygen transport white blood cells deal with leukocytes and they engulf invading microorganisms. Platelets or thrombocytes help blood to clot. Okay. So now we're dealing with the structure of xylem vessels and their function. The transport system in plants is more simple than that seen in animals. There is no pump and there is no specialized transport medium. This transport system is made up of two types of transport vessels. The xylem vessels, which carry water and minerals, and the phloem tubes, which carry food materials made by the plant. Xylem vessels are hollow, long, and very narrow tubes that are formed from elongated cells that are joined end to end. The end walls of the cells are not present, so the cells form an open tube. The cells are dead, so there is no cytoplasm, and lignin gives the cell walls their strength and thickness. Okay, metabolic waste. The sum of all chemical reactions that take place in the cell is called metabolism. These reactions in the cell produces a range of waste products called excretory products. These waste products must be removed from the organism and the process of removal is called excretion. Without the removal of these waste products, they could damage 
or kill body cells. Now we'll deal with excretion, excretion in animals. You have respiration. During cellular respiration, carbon dioxide is produced. Carbon dioxide is dangerous to living tissue because its presence increases the acidity of the fluids in the cell, which affects metabolism. In humans, the carbon dioxide is transported in the blood and carried to the lungs where it is released during exhalation. During exercise, more CO2 is produced, so the rate of breathing is increased. Red blood cells. The red blood cell has a short lifespan, so when the reusable components are stored, the remaining components are broken down into bile pigments and excreted as bile into the gut and out with the feces. Protein metabolism. After protein is broken down, the result is nitrogenous waste. This nitrogenous waste is converted to urea. The nitrogenous waste product is removed by the kidneys and exits the body as urine. Now excretion in plants. During photosynthesis, the plant produces oxygen and water as waste products. Oxygen is removed from the plant by being released through the stomata. Water is reused by the cells or is lost from the plant by transpiration. Some nitrogenous wastes are also produced by the plant, and these are converted into insoluble substances. These are stored in the leaves, bark, flowers, fruits, and seeds. The mechanism of movement and its role in living organisms. There are many reasons why animals move from place to place, as the, and these include to find food, to escape from predators, to find a mate, to disperse offspring, to reduce competition, to avoid danger, to avoid waste products, and to avoid extreme ex environmental conditions. Okay, movement in plants. Movement in plants is demonstrated in various ways and for various reasons. Movements caused by growth in plants are called tropisms, and these include phototropism, which is growth in response to light, geotropism, which is growth in response to gravity, and thigmotropism. This is not caused by growth, but it is the movement of a part of a plant caused by the stimulus of touch. And here's a diagram showing the different tropisms. So you have phototropism, gravitropism, and thigmotropism. Movement in humans. One of the many functions of the skeleton is movement. The skeleton forms a framework inside the body and is made up of many bones joined together. Movement is seen at these joints due to the fact that muscles, tendons and ligaments are attached to them. Without these attachments to the joints, movement would not be possible. And there are many types of joints. These include immovable, partially movable and movable. Okay, this is the end of the lesson. Thank you for listening.